Number 8. Haunted Forest Sculptures A Japanese artist has come up with a series of lifelike sculptures that terrifies anyone that sees them. Using driftwood as his medium, artist Nagato Iwasaki has created incredibly realistic sculptures that look like a cross between robots and humans. One look at the installation at Mount Fuji and you might get a strange feeling of familiarity. That is until you realize the figures you're looking at are all made of dead pieces of wood. Each of the unique figures stands at about 5 feet 9 inches, which is taller than a lot of people that dare to stand close. The driftwood has been pieced together to create the wooden humans, and each one has its own quirks and personality. From the scary to the unsettling, each figure looms like a humanoid android frozen mid-pose, looking a bit too much like Slenderman. Blurring the line between flesh and wood, the sculptures were made from driftwood that the artist collected from various locations across Japan. But the man behind these haunting artworks is as mysterious as the art itself. No one knows much about Nagato Iwasaki or what inspired him to create this line, which he simply calls torsos. But that hasn't stopped them from becoming one of the most sought-after creations in Tokyo. From solo and group exhibitions featuring his art to collaborations with a fashion designer, the torso is being featured in the album cover of a Tokyo-based indie rock band. It's obvious that the chilling, human-like sculptures continue to attract fans while giving the rest of us a bit of a scare. Number 7. The Sunken Kingdom Sometimes Mother Nature has a way of revealing the world's hidden secrets. When a storm hit a whale's beach one spring day, it left behind a trail of devastation. But it also left something else behind to surprise the researchers. They realized the storm had unearthed a hidden treasure, one that has ties to a legend from Welsh mythology. An ancient forest of 4,500-year-old trees was exposed after violent wind and massive waves scoured away layers of sand along the shores of Cardigan Bay. The storm was a blessing in disguise. Researchers were thrilled. They discovered an ancient forest of alder, oak, and birch trees that date to the time when Stonehenge was first being built. The forest stretched for three miles up the coast, where it was slowly buried under layers of sand and salt water over the course of millennia when the sea levels rose. Luckily, there were also layers of peat, which experts thought was the key to preserving the old forest for so long. The trees aren't the only remarkable things unearthed on this same coastline. Other excavations have produced fossilized footprints and ancient tools from human settlements that were once there. Until now, the forest was part of a local mythology known as the Sunken Hundred or the Lowland Hundred. These tales from the Middle Ages told of a powerful kingdom that sank after a prince didn't close the gate, causing the ocean to flood the land, losing the mythical forest beneath the waves. Another story describes a fairy who allowed an ancient well to overflow and submerge the kingdom. With so many fairy tales surrounding the forest, the discovery really excited historians and Welsh citizens alike. Number 6. The Sinking Pond a group of hikers set off a firestorm of speculation recently when they came across a strange site in a hardwood forest near Manchester, Tennessee. The group stumbled upon a forest that seemed to be half living and half dead. But could the chilling scene be an optical illusion or was something more sinister going on? The site, known as the Sinking Pond, is located on Arnold Air Force Base and it got its name from a bizarre thing that happens every year. During the winter, the water depth varies but in late summer, the entire pond sinks out of sight, leaving behind something truly unique, a stark line along the bottom of the tree trunks. Below this line, the trees are covered in moss and waterlogged. It looks as if someone simply spray-painted the bottom of the trees, spanning 394 acres, making them look like they are both living and dead at the same time. It might look like an alien landscape, but the trees get their unusual look as a result of sinkholes at the bottom of the pond. During the changing seasons, water levels rise and fall more abruptly, leaving behind the impression where the waterline was before the pond went dry. As climate change affects the area, extended drought conditions keep the pond dry, making the forest look like you've stepped into another world. Number 5. Sinister Scout Camp most parents expect their kids to get into some sort of shenanigans when they send them off to summer camp. But for those who brave New Mexico's Uraca Misa at Philmont Scout Ranch, they might wish they had just gone to a water park instead. The Scout Ranch is spread over 214 square miles of rugged terrain, but strenuous hikes are the least of the worries for those who head into these great outdoors. 
Before it became a scout branch and before they all disappeared, the ancestral Pueblans called the region home. A medicine man from a modern tribe who studied the petroglyphs in the area warned others that the ancient tribes who lived there before them had battled evil there. To keep the dark forces at bay, they entered a portal to the underworld and a shaman sealed it behind them. Could this be why compasses won't work there? Or why Uraka has more lightning strikes than anywhere else in the state? Worried about the evil escaping from the portal he closed, the shaman placed cat totems around the Misa to scare away magpies that are able to open the portal. Uraka means magpie in Spanish, another strange coincidence about this remote campsite. But tales of ancient lost tribes are just the beginning of what has gone on in Uraka Mesa. Scouts hiking at night have heard strange noises. One person even spotted a dark-skinned, hairless figure watching him. After taking off in the opposite direction, the scout turned back, only to see another figure with an eerie blue glowing light around him. According to local Native American legend, it could be the shaman standing watch on the mesa, making sure that the evil entities on the other side of the portal stay where they belong. Whatever the origin is for all the strange happenings at the scout camp, one thing's for sure, there's something otherworldly going on in New Mexico, and it might be tied to the sinister past of the rugged wilderness. Would you ever visit the scout camp to see if you might catch a glimpse of the strange phenomena that happens there? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit subscribe. Number 4. Rainbow Colored Marsh One look at this hidden forest and you'd swear you'd stumbled upon another world. But there's more to this wetland in Virginia than meets the eye. It has a magical secret that you have to see to believe. An unusual phenomenon that occurs throughout the year transforms this marsh in First Landing State Park into a rainbow-colored wonderland. Hikers stumbled upon the area and could not believe it. At first glance, they had no idea what they were seeing, so they snapped a bunch of photos before going in for a closer look. When they did, they found rainbow slick water as far as the eye could see. The couple were dying to know more about the multicolored marshland, and they got a little insight from a local swamp walk group. Decaying vegetation in the swamp let out natural oils as they decompose. That, along with the bacteria in the soil, combine to create the magical-looking water. When the oils get trapped on the surface, they pool there, and they can linger for a longer amount of time in larger areas when there isn't much rainfall. When they do and the sun starts to shine into the marshland, it creates a pastel rainbow effect that makes the water look like a shimmering iridescent pool that has to be seen to be believed. Number 3. Ancient Forest Witch Marks Archaeologists discovered something strange in the New Forest in Hampshire, England. They found strange markings carved into trees they believed were there to ward off evil. The markings look like some form of ancient graffiti. Archaeologists think the lost symbols could be centuries old, left behind over a thousand years ago by residents terrified of being attacked by something sinister. Witch marks were a series of concentric circles that the superstitious and the fearful carved into caves, buildings, and trees as a way to ward off malicious spirits and protect themselves from harm. They were said to terrify witches who feared the perfection of the circle. But the mystical marks weren't the only things found carved into the trees. Researchers also discovered a series of king's marks carved into trees as a way to save the best ones for use in shipbuilding. One can't help but wonder what might happen to those living in the area if the trees that used for protection were cut down and hauled away. Would a new wave of superstitious activity spread through the country? Or would another wave of witch hunters set out to protect themselves the way they did during the European witch trials? Graffiti isn't just for alleys or the sides of buildings anymore, so you might want to take a closer look the next time you spot archaic symbols carved into the side of a tree. They might be ancient scribblings that tell a tale of the ancient beliefs and long-held fears of our rural ancestors. Number 2. The Nine Ladies In the English high country, ancient structures, stone circles, and hidden burial sites are unearthed all the time as production and construction move further into the forests. But a stone monument found in the moors continues to inspire and attract those keen to catch a glimpse into the distant past. Many stone monuments have been unearthed at Stanton Moor, but even with so many new discoveries, a group of nine stone cairns seem to get the most attention. Known locally as the Nine Ladies, the monuments were first discovered in 1782, and the story behind them is one steeped in folklore, telling a tale of nine ladies who were punished for dancing on a Sunday. Their punishment? Being turned to stone. 
The stone circle is part of a Bronze Age complex along with countless prehistoric circles and standing stones. The Nine Ladies date to about 3,000 to 4,000 years ago, but other than the original folk tale, no one knows exactly when or why they are placed there. Could they mark the graves of real women punished for dancing, or are they there for some other reason? Other stone monuments, including Stonehenge, have astrological origins, and some are placed over ancient burials. So is it possible the Nine Ladies were real and are buried beneath the stones that bear their names? No one knows if it was just a marker or if it was used for some other ritualistic or ceremonial purposes. For now though, people continue to visit the monuments and imagine a time when Nine Ladies were punished for their dancing and made into these markers that continue to capture the imagination of visitors hundreds of years after they were placed there. Number 1. Polish Cache Forestry worker Bogusław Schwittenberg was out for his usual work day when he spotted something strange in the forest by the side of the road. After taking a closer look, the man realized he had found something special. Two clay pots filled with silver coins. Excited by his find, Schwittenberg immediately handed the hoard over to the local archaeological museum and the race to figure out where the coins came from was on. Working to clean the coins, experts had a monumental task on their hands. The treasure was in good shape but the coins were tarnished and mostly stuck together in clumps. The first few silver pieces experts preserved dated to 1516 and 1612, a time when Poland was experiencing a revolution. For centuries, Polish people spoke Latin, but during the 1500s, Polish became the official language. At the same time, art, music, and literature flourished, with their influences seen in a new wave of elaborate architecture. As experts continue to restore the precious coins, they are unearthing a part of Polish history that they may one day be able to decipher, one that might tell the world more about the Renaissance that ushered in a new era in Poland. Number 9. Face on Mars Did you know Mars has a face? It was discovered by the Viking 1 orbiter in 1976. When the scientists back on Earth saw the image, there must have been quite a shock. However, the sensation was brief. It stretched out over two miles and is located in the Cydonia area of Mars. Scientists disregarded the face as some kind of shadow, but ever since its discovery, theories of its origins have popped up. People believe aliens have visited the planetary system with an enthusiasm for creation. Some think that the face was made by an alien race. Now that's some out-of-this-world art. In 2001, NASA's Mars Global Surveyor examined the face again, this time with a much better camera, and discovered that there was actually no face at all. What looked to be a face turned out to be simply another plain old Martian mesa, similar to the formations that litter the American Southwest. But that doesn't rule out the possibility of an alien encounter. There's still a lot we don't know about Mars at its past. Number 8. Cave Paintings at Chirma The culturally vibrant country, India, has had its fair share of conspiracists who think the country was visited by extraterrestrials years before the United States even existed. It is believed that aliens arrived in India about 10,000 years ago. A sequence of paintings discovered in the Charma Caves in Chhattisgarh has led to this theory. The cave paintings in Charma are unlike any other ancient cave depictions. Charma's cave paintings show unique shapes of human-like beings. The humanoid forms are far more similar to the alien image we know today. The aliens also appear to be wearing a helmet, possibly for intergalactic space travel. Drawings of flying saucers can also be seen in the Charma rock art. What's more, the forms bear a striking resemblance to the well-known flying saucers from pop culture and to those cited by conspiracy theorists globally. They even possess the antennas and landing mechanisms that have been shown in alien movies. A few scientific groups were able to put a year to the artworks using carbon dating. While some of the paintings are over 2,000 years old, most are well over 10,000. Charma is perhaps the only location of its sort with alien beings depicted in cave paintings. But what helps make it more intriguing is its proximity to Hoshangarbad, Madhya, and Pradesh, where identical paintings have been discovered. 
The paintings of aliens at Hoshangarbad have huge, enormous eyes in comparison to their skulls. NASA was intrigued and excited to investigate these paintings back in 2018. However, no one ever heard from them after their investigation. At least, their findings weren't made public. This has only fueled India's conspiracy theorists who believe that NASA, at the request of world leaders, is withholding information concerning aliens or maybe outer space allies from the public. What is it they could have found? Number 7. Saksai Huaman Some think Saksai Huaman, a fortress on the borders of Cusco, Peru, was built by an ancient civilization with the assistance of alien architects. Out-of-this-world beings working toward earthly development sounds pretty cool, but why do people think this way? The interlock castle walls, which date back over a thousand years, are constructed of boulders weighing up to 360 tons each. The rocks were transported across a 20-mile distance before being hoisted up and placed with laser-like accuracy. The fortress itself was erected by the Kilke civilization, according to archaeologists. Hundreds of workers were needed to rough cut the boulders and haul them to the building site using only rope. At the construction site, the stones were sculpted into their final form before being set in position. How an ancient society achieved such an incredible feat of engineering is a delightful puzzle to solve. Turns out that Incas were just as good at building homes and defending complexes as they were at observing the sky and creating calendars. Saksai Huaman was not the only ancient site where sophisticated masonry could be found. Similar walls can be seen all across the Inca Empire, as well as one in Cusco, where a 12-angled stone had just been painstakingly pushed into position. Do you think these ancient people completed the structures all by themselves? Or do you believe in alien theories? Number 6. Nazca Lines more than 800 big white streaks carved through the Peruvian desert sit beautifully crafted on the arid plateau. 300 geometric forms and over 70 animal figurines, along with a spider, a hummingbird, and a monkey, join them. The most extensive formations, which span over 1,200 feet, can best be seen from the sky and the surrounding foothills. The Nazca art, which experts believe to be two millennia old, is also assumed to have a deep alien connection due to its enormous size. The patterns were created by scaling the top layer of rusty pebbles to reveal the dazzling white sand below. These patterns were first connected with constellations and solstices when they were first researched in the 1900s. The latest research shows that Nazca lines have more ceremonial or ritual implications. Some believe they either point towards underground water tables or symbolize fertility. These geoglyphs are designs on the ground that remove rocks and dirt to form what looks like a negative picture. The uncovered structures have remained relatively intact for 500 to 2000 years due to the lack of rain, wind, and erosion in the dry area. The bulk of lines, according to scientists, were created by the Nazca people, who lived between 1 to 700 AD. Do you think that these gigantic and perfectly etched designs were humanly possible back then? Or is it a piece of artwork left by visitors from outer space? It still remains a mystery. If you're enjoying today's video of ancient alien theories, don't forget to show your support with a like and share. Also, subscribe to our channel for more ancient mysteries. Now, on to the next theory. Number 5. Stonehenge It's impossible to discuss Stonehenge without coming across an old-fashioned alien plot twist. A massive ring of stones, many weighing up to 50 tons, stands outside Salisbury in the English countryside. The structure known as Stonehenge led Swiss author Eric von Dedeken to believe it was used as an alien launch pad. Because how else could these enormous stones have wound up hundreds of kilometers away from their starting quarry? UFO sightings have made appearances in newspapers, journals, and online, with one instance involving researchers being pursued by a tall, slender figure. Is it possible that an extraterrestrial has returned to see his hard work? 
Nobody knows for sure what Stonehenge was used for, but unlike the other monuments in the series, the explanation isn't aliens. Instead, scientists have proven that a building like this could be created using technology that was available about 5,000 years ago, only when the site's oldest structures were constructed. However, the stones seem to be aligned around solstices and eclipses, implying that the Stonehenge builders were at least somewhat aware of the skies, even if they didn't originate from above. Still quite surprising though, don't you think? Do you think someone, or maybe something, that had surreal knowledge of the outer celestial world left early humans with the blueprints to create this structure? Let us know in the comments below. Number 4. Easter Island the mystery surrounding Easter Island's fleet of giant stone sculptures, known as Moai, are similar to those around the other locations we've spoken about. How did the Rapa Nui tribe create these figurines over a thousand years ago? And also, how did the Moai get to Easter Island in the first place? Roughly 900 figures sculpted from stone are found scattered around the sides of the island's volcanoes. These structures, which stand 13 feet tall and weigh 14 tons, seem to have been carved from the Ranu Raraku quarry's soft volcanic tuff. Over 400 sculptures were left incomplete, while other Finnish figures were waiting to be transported to their final resting place. Carbon dating estimates the period of these monoliths to be around 400 AD to 1500 AD. Were alien beings involved in the creation and transport of the famous massive sculptures on Easter Island? The Moai's origins are unknown, although they were most likely carved for religious or ceremonial purposes. It's also unclear what happened to the famous stonecrafting tribe of Rapa Nui. Where did they go? One of the hypotheses is that their civilization perished due to a self-created environmental calamity. But could it also be possible alien allies welcomed them in with open arms? It seems a bit far-fetched, but imagine if it were true. Number 3. Bermuda Triangle Between Bermuda, San Juan, and Miami, there's a stretch of water in the Atlantic Ocean known as the Bermuda Triangle. The prospect of sailing or flying across the Bermuda Triangle can make sailors and pilots apprehensive, and can you blame them? No one enjoys fiddling with death. The Bermuda Triangle is famously known by the hundreds of ships and planes that have wrecked there throughout the years. Over 1,000 people have lost their lives there. Oftentimes, any discussion of the Bermuda Triangle includes the possibility of extraterrestrial interference, although there's no evidence to infer that aliens are to blame for any of these mishaps. They may be an easy scapegoat in the case of mysterious disappearances. In the closing shots of a science fiction film called The Third Kind, pilots from every decade are seen returning to Earth uninjured and safe from a benevolent extraterrestrial ship. However, it is simple to see why aliens might select the Bermuda Triangle's huge, secluded location to kidnap unknowing tourists. Are we ever going to find out the truth behind the triangle? Perhaps one day, this enigma will be answered. But until then, it's entertaining to speculate about the possible explanations. Number 2. Alien Pyramids Conspiracists and writers have entertained the concept that aliens constructed the Pyramids of Giza ever since the late 20th century. Eric von Dedeken, the notorious writer, was instrumental in popularizing the notion that aliens assisted the historic Egyptians in constructing their monuments. Dedekin thought that ancient Egyptians lacked the knowledge and equipment to build the Giza pyramids and therefore must have been created by aliens. The Mayan pyramids in Central America and the enormous artwork in the fields of the Nazca Desert have also been subjected to similar allegations. The pyramids seem like they were impossible to build without modern tech, considering they date back to 4,500 years ago. It's beyond comprehension how the people of those days managed to line each stone up with such accuracy. And we're talking millions of them that weigh at least two tons each. What's more, Michigan State University revealed that the pyramids are in line with the Orion constellation, the precision of which is almost impossible to arrive at without the help of some sort of AI technology. 
Research also suggests that it could have taken the painstaking labor of thousands of workers, supposedly ranging from 14,000 to 40,000 men at any given time. With minimal tools, the absence of the wheel, and without any pulley system in place, this mammoth of a project was completed in just 10 years. How could such an elaborate project have been completed in just a decade? Even if it were constructed today, using the tools we have, it would take years. Doesn't it hint some outside presence had to have played a role in construction? If it was human calculations, then why was this innate talent of humans lost in the centuries after? Why have we come to depend on technology for the simplest of calculations while our ancestors could pull off such massive projects with primitive tools? It would have been easier to know the truth if cameras had been invented before the pyramids. Perhaps one day, all will be revealed. Number 1. Egyptian Artifacts Discovered in Jerusalem For the number one spot on the list, we have yet another theory from Egypt. A large collection of ancient Egyptian artifacts found in the Jerusalem home of the Egyptologist Sir William Petrie has sparked rumors. These items are believed to be capable of altering the very understanding of ancient Egyptian chronology and has been causing quite a stir among alien and UFO enthusiasts. The extraterrestrial Egyptian antiquities were found in the most unlikely of places, concealed behind Sir Petrie's bookshelves, deep down in a secret chamber. Petrie may have found evidence of alien life on Earth way before his death in 1942, but he decided to keep it to himself hidden away in his home. Experts soon grew worried that the items would never be publicly disclosed when the Rockefeller Museum gained possession of them almost immediately after they were found. So what did they actually find? Two mummified individuals just under four feet tall. What makes the find more interesting is the fact that it hints at a connection between ancient Egypt and a sophisticated ET society. During the era of the Egyptian civilization's Old Kingdom, dwarfs and pygmies caught in the heart of Africa were regarded as celestial creatures and given high value. The four-footed creatures allegedly had an extraterrestrial origin and were therefore considered divine. The skeletons are thought to bear classic, alien-like features such as enlarged skulls, deepened eye sockets, and extended arms. As for the other relics, they are on display at the Petrie Museum of Egyptian Archaeology in Camden, London. The museum also holds many other Egyptian and Sudanese artifacts in its possession. These include some of the firsts of the ancient Egyptian world, like the oldest dress and the oldest linen, which date back to 5000 BC. According to Shepard Embellas, the editor-in-chief of the website Intellihub News, which deals with alternative news, mechanical devices which are considered highly advanced were also found alongside the mummified bodies. Umbellus was referring to a gold disc that had a transparent see-through top. On a further look, the device had numerous gold orbs and crosses that were interlocked and surrounded by a spiral tubing which was also made of gold. The symbols did not look anything like ancient Egyptian writing. So what did these inscriptions mean and where did they come from? Some believe these symbols depict extraterrestrial flying saucers. A similar spaceship symbol, known as helicopter hieroglyphs, were also found at a temple in Abydos, Egypt. If you look closely, it bears a striking resemblance to the aircrafts we know today. Could this be further proof that aliens helped build Egyptian structures and had a close relationship with their culture? The archaeologist Dr. Al Eldin Shaheen admitted in 2010 that the pyramids are possibly not of this world. It's fascinating to speculate whether or not aliens have visited our planet. Did aliens play a role in the development of ancient human civilizations? Which alien theory did you like the most? Number 10. Mordovia Pagan Treasure Trove Deep in the forests of Mordovia, in the Ruzayevsky district of northwestern Russia, lies the burial sites of 400 Mordovian pagans. Dating back to the 18th century, 600 skeleton remains, hundreds of ceremonial costumes, coins, and jewelry were found by the Russian excavation team by the name of Expedition. 
It is the largest find in the area, with a known excavation site of 32,615 square feet, which opened it up to wannabe treasure hunters attempting to sneak onto the site, hoping they can take a piece for themselves. The excavation team had to resort to hiring round-the-clock security, as they could only unearth so much at once, and locals were coming daily to take a look at the immense excavation site. The site was considered to be a Kalmalayai, or river cemetery, translated from the original Mokshan language. It has proven to be a fascinating look into how the pre-Christian slash Russian pagans performed their burials. They were buried together in an almost embrace with the position of one woman's remains laying her hand on a man's chest, showing a view into their beliefs about the afterlife. Besides the cultural treasures of the centuries-old burial site, the excavation team was also able to uncover women's brooches, glass beads, and rings. Furthermore, in the findings were men's belt buckles, knives, ancient screws and fasteners, and even full armchairs. While this site might not be the classic pirate's chest full of gold, the cultural treasure that this site provides is beyond any level of measurable wealth. Number 9. 900-Year-Old Sword Some people say that Israel is home to an entire universe of treasures, both ethereal and worldly. For one lucky scuba diver by the name of Shlomi Katzen, he discovered an underwater site full of ruins, ancient pottery, and a three-foot-long broadsword dating back to the 11th to 13th century. After swift undercurrents moved enough sand and material away, the marine creature covered handle, hilt, and blade were clearly visible. Now normally, scuba divers never touch artifacts so as to not disturb the dive site or what might be lurking underneath. However, Katzen knew this rare treasure might be covered again, so he broke the diver's code and contacted the Israel Antiquities Authority, or IAA. During the 11th and 13th century, several European powers sent crusader knights to Israel with the stated goal of freeing the Holy Lands from Muslim authority and used the Carmel Coast as the main launching point for multiple sea-based campaigns. According to the IAA, the sword most definitely belonged to a crusading knight and they had even found other treasures at the same search site before. However, due to the ever-changing conditions on the Carmel Coast, it's hard to discover what else the natural ship shelter is hiding under the waves. Number 8. $17 Billion Shipwreck For the vast majority of us, we all wanted to be swashbuckling pirates at one point or another, finding buried treasure or looting Spanish galleons for all they're worth. For the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and their underwater robot, they got to live that dream with the finding of the San Jose off the coast of Colombia in November of 2015. The San Jose was an impressive 62-gun, three-masted galleon, holding a cargo worth roughly 17 billion US dollars. It was sunk by the British ships during the Spanish War of Succession in June of 1708, taking its 600 souls aboard down with it. Most experts agree that with its treasure of gold, silver, and emeralds, it is the most valuable shipwreck ever found. The wreck was found at a depth of over 1,968 and a half feet by using the latest sonar imaging technology for 2015. It wasn't until the research team piloting the underwater drone was able to get clear images of its dolphin engraved cannons that they were able to confirm the ship's identity. Due to the wreck's immense treasure aboard, the Colombian government has been keeping the exact location of the ship a closely guarded state secret, but that hasn't stopped the legal battles from waging on who exactly is the rightful owner of the fortune. From the Colombian government to several other countries, and even pirate salvage companies, the most intense game of finders keepers is only just beginning. Number 7. The Amber Room Treasure The Amber Room was said to be one of the eight wonders of the world when it was constructed in 1716 for the Berlin City Palace by German designer Andreas Schluter and Danish amber craftsman Gottfried Wolfram. 
The room itself is crafted entirely of amber, gold, gemstones, and highly polished mirrors, and while considered to be priceless, its material cost was in the range of 142 million to 500 million US dollars. After its construction, it was moved a number of times before finding a home in the Catherine Palace in modern-day Pushkin, just outside of St. Petersburg in 1755. Fast forward to World War II and the Nazis are pushing into the Soviet bloc. They not only found the Amber Room, but also went about removing it and sending it to Königsberg to be put on display. During the Soviet counterattack, Hitler had the German army attempt to send the treasure home to Berlin via a steamer ship called the Karlsruhe. The Soviet Air Force ended up sinking the ship because if Stalin couldn't have the Amber Room, then no one could. It was said to be lost forever. That is, until in October of 2020, Polish divers from the Baltic Tech Group found what they believed to be the wreckage of the Karlsruhe. The wreck the Baltic Tech Group found was at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, the same sea it was sunk in and was loaded up with Nazi military vehicles, porcelain, and crates full of unknown contents. Documentation from the time provides us with more evidence as the ship was loaded with a large cargo and left Königsberg in a hurry. The Polish dive team seems convinced that they solved the mystery of the Amber Room. What do you think? Let us know in the comments if they found the remnants of the Amber Room or just another Nazi warship. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. The Farmer Vikings Treasure Trove One could argue the life of a farmer is difficult at best, but a small farmer's life didn't get any easier after two treasure hunters found over 15.4 million US dollars in Viking coins outside Lemster in central England in 2015. 38-year-old George Powell and 51-year-old Leyden Davis found the coins on the land of Lord Cawley and were known members of the English Metal Detecting Society. Normally, this would be a great find that could rewrite English history, as the coins were from the 5th or 6th century and featured two very important faces. King Alfred the Great of Wessex and his contemporary, Caelwulf II of Mercia. They were supposedly two rulers of the same land, implying that the two kingdoms had some kind of allegiance and might disprove the later texts that showed Caelwulf as merely a pawn for the Vikings. However, both Powell and Davis have been charged and convicted of theft and concealment of antiquities under British law. While in the ocean, it's more or less finders keepers, on British soil, any treasure hunters are required to report their findings of anything ancient or of value to the government within two weeks of the discovery. The government will still pay market price and the landowner and finder may have to split the value. Powell and Davis didn't exactly do that. They sold several of the coins quietly on the black market. The pair got 10 and 8 and a half years in prison, respectively. Out of the hundreds of coins found, only 31 pieces were retrieved. Number 5. Pablo's Old Stash Money In Colombia, no one had more money than the king of cocaine himself, Pablo Escobar. According to Forbes, Escobar was the seventh richest person on the planet, and while his exact net worth is unknown, it was rumored that he spent over 20,000 US dollars on rubber bands alone just so he can bundle all of his cash. During the end of his career and life, he was forced into hiding while he waged war against the Colombian state to avoid being sent to prison in the US. Unlike his time spent in Colombian prison, he couldn't play by his own rules in the US prison system. That thought would make any man with that amount of power and wealth do just about anything to avoid capture. During his two-year run from the law, he stashed several apartments and safe houses in Medellin, Colombia with millions of dollars in cash, as a criminal billionaire does. 
While most of that money has gone untouched, one of Escobar's nephews living in one of these old safe houses found around $18 million in September of 2020. Nicholas Escobar claims that a vision helped him find the hidden wall containing the $18 million in cash, as well as an old pen, satellite phones, a typewriter, and an undeveloped roll of film. Unfortunately for Nicholas, some of the money was damaged and considered unusable, but only time will tell what was on the undeveloped film roll and perhaps more clues to even more untold treasures. Number 4. Treasure Island Seeming to have come out of a dollar store graphic novel, Crusoe Island should get the nickname Treasure Island after 800 barrels of loot in Incan gold coins and jewels were found. Most people haven't heard of Crusoe Island until 2005 when the announcement of the treasure by Wagner, the Chilean company leading the search, set off an ownership war between the treasure hunters and the Chilean government. It is said that the treasure is worth over 10 billion US dollars. However, since its burial in 1715 by Spanish sailor Juan Esteban Ubilla y Echeverria, there have been centuries of claims of finding the long lost treasure with every single one turning up empty. Except in the case of the Wagner team, they actually have some level of credibility to their claim. What makes this one different is that a mini robot dubbed Artur Tito was brought to the island to scan the proposed burial site. Artur Tito was originally a crime-solving master scanner with a scanning range of 150 feet. Artur Tito has reportedly pinpointed the location to an artificial tunnel under a thick slab of volcanic rock. There is a small hitch in the team's plan. The island is now a protected conservation area, and digging there in the manner that the Wagner team wants to proceed could be illegal according to the Chilean government. While the treasure hunters know where the treasure most likely is, they can't quite break out the shovels and pickaxes just yet. Number 3. Israeli Goonies Working for a volunteer program with your friends can be some of the most rewarding times of your young life. But it's quite rare that your volunteer work rewards you with literal gold. In August of 2022, 18-year-olds working on the construction of a community in Yavne, south of Tel Aviv, Israel, uncovered 425 gold coins from over 1,100 years ago. While finding any artifacts from this time in Israel is rare, these coins were especially rare as they coined the names of several rules throughout the region and most importantly, the production date and location. While a number of empires were at war or engaged in some kind of conflict at the time of this jar's burial, one very important thing has been proven due to this jar. Through war, trade, or some other means, having coins from multiple empires in one location means the money kept flowing and gives more insight into the trade and economic functions of the region at the time of burial. Now, on a more personal level to the original owner of the jar, the hoard of coins was found in a jar sealed tight with a nail and buried in a nondescript location, implying a number of things. First, the original owner meant to hide the stash for later use. Secondly, the owner clearly thought they would be able to return to its location. However, what caused the original owner to not be able to return to their small fortune is a mystery lost to the sands of time. So maybe next time your friend offers you a chance to volunteer out in the desert, take him up on the offer. Never know what kind of things you'll uncover. Number 2. China's 1,200-year-old pottery set up until 2005, our understanding of ancient China was that it was a backward agricultural society that was home to several pirates but was never considered a seafaring nation. This idea was turned on its head when 47-year-old Tilman Walter Fang found a multi-million dollar haul off of the coast of Indonesia. What started off as a simple summer holiday scuba trip for Walter Fang turned into a six-year-long journey into China's maritime history going back to the 8th century. 
with the help of local fishermen and local divers using improvised dive gear, such as homemade scuba masks and garden hoses acting as their gas bottles. Walter Fang recovered 60,000 relics, ranging from porcelain to ceramic wine jugs to embossed gold and silver chalices and plates going back 1,200 years. This massive haul was originally sent to sail for Malaysia, India, and current-day Saudi Arabia via an Arab Dao, a type of Middle Eastern sailing ship. The location of the wreck implies the Dao crashed on the underwater reefs in Indonesia's Karimata Straits. This discovery radically changed our view of China, and more specifically, the Tang Dynasty, which ruled from 618 to 906 AD, and their ability to set up maritime trade routes almost 200 years before the Spanish, Portuguese, and British. Currently, Walter Fang's personal collection stacks 15 feet in height in an aircraft hangar in New Zealand. Number 1. The Trier Gold Hoard we all know the Romans were one of the most powerful empires to ever exist. They amassed one of the biggest empires in terms of land, power, and of course, treasure. For one German construction worker in 1993, his life was changed when he found one of the biggest hidden Roman gold hoards ever found. 2,516 Roman gold coins were found in the dirt under the construction site of a new car park in Trier, a small town close to the border of Luxembourg. This caused a mini gold rush in the city as everyone with a touch of archaeological knowledge and a metal detector rushed to the site to see if they could unearth a piece of the action. It was reported later that a few of the treasure hunters paid for their after-work beers with one of the coins. The hoard was worth 700,000 euros and featured several coins that researchers considered rare. The coins held the faces of 40 Roman emperors or their relatives, from Emperor Nero to Marcus Aurelius. This fact proved to researchers that during times of war or disease, the rich and powerful that feared for their lives would deposit some of their riches to try and aid them should they need to run for their lives. The Trier Gold Hoard shows that humans and their love for gold and fear of death has never really changed. If you like that video, considering liking and subscribing for more knowledge delivered straight to your notifications. What would you do if you found one of these mythic treasures? Let us know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching.